So welcome to the second part of uh, studying on red berry. Now uh, we will further discuss uh, the studying on red bearing in detail. So first uh, we will go for understanding the journal or the sleeve bearings. So we have seen that hydrodynamic bearing is uh, carrying the load due to its motion. So there are this three categories of the bearings available. One is a full bearing which is actually having angle of contact equal to 360 degree and it takes the load in any direction. Now another is a partial bearing. So generally the angle of contact of the partial bearing is less than 180 and uh, most commonly used value of this angle of contact is 120 degree. So these are generally used in uh, railroad cars and the load in this kind of bearings will be taken only in the uh, one direction. So this is the third kind of category. In this case actually the angle is different compared to this. It is called as a fitted bearing. So these bearings are simple in construction and they are easy to supply lubricating oil in this case. They are having low frictional loss and low temperature rise for this partial or the fitted type of bearings. Now next uh, we will see how this hydrodynamic bearing will work. So you can see here this is journal, this is the bearing, there is oil inlet through which oil is being supplied to this bearing. Then uh, in this case you can see that the force is acting downward and uh, this is initially the downward force of the journal and the force due to bearing was in the opposite direction. But now here uh, once it starts rotation the force means the point of contact of the journal and the bearing will change. So the resultant oil film force is changing its position from initial position. So in the running condition then again the force direction and uh, applied force and the registering force directions will change and here you can see that pressure distribution. So in the uh, different positions means when uh, it is at rest the position of the general and the bearing will be like this when they are at the start of rotation and when it at the start of it after some time it will be like this. So we will discuss these uh, steps in detail one by one. So when the shaft is at rest and uh, it's, it is going to sink at the bottom of this particular bearing of the clearance space under the action of the load. So load is acting over it therefore it will sink like this. So as the journal starts to rotate it climbs the bearing surface. So this rotation will cause this oil to be pushed downward and because of that this particular journal will be raised upward. So you can see that this is the center of the bearing O and O dash is the center of the journal. So it is in the vertical line these two centers. Now these two centers are in the inclined line. After it is attaining the full speed so at full speed it forces the fluid into the waste shaped region. So this waste shaped region is created and because of this waste shaped region it is having under pressure so this journal will be lifted upward. So since the more fluid is forced into the waste shaped clearance pressure is generated within the system. So the pressure distribution is as shown in this particular diagram. So this pressure supports the external load. So therefore this type of uh, journal bearing is also called as self acting bearing and it needs a continuous supply of lubricant. So these are used in bearings on engines or in centrifugal pumps. So now uh, we will talk about the Petroff's equation. So Petroff's equation is used to determine the coefficient of friction. So there are certain assumptions made in the determining the equation of coefficient of friction by Petroff's. So first assumption is that the shaft is concentric with the bearing and second assumption is that the bearing is subjected to light load. So you can see here uh, one vertical shaft is there which is rotating into this bearing. Okay, So this is the bearing and this is the shaft. So load is acting over this bearing on this direction. 
so we are using r as a radius of journal in mm l is the length of the bearing in mm c is the radial clearance between the journal and the bearing and ns is the journal speed in revolutions per second so velocity at the surface of the journal if you have to find out generally we are using the equation of velocity as pi dn so pi d is the thing of 2 into r and n is the revolutions per second so 2 pi r ns is the speed or velocity at the surface of the journal now if we use the newton's law of viscosity so we know that the shear stress developed like you can see here this is the surface this is suppose fluid is present over here now we have to find out this frictional force over here this is at a distance of h from this surface so mu is given by uh, this shear stress is given by mu into dou u by dou y so shear stress is equal to viscosity dynamic viscosity into change in velocity and change in distance so if i put this uh, shear stress as force upon area so and if you write this equation as f is equal to and f is equal to mu into a u by h where f is the tangential frictional force a is the area of journal surface journal surface area means circumference of this journal is 2 pi r and length of the journal l and u is the surface velocity just now we found out that 2 pi r into ns and here is the distance between the general and the bearing surface that is you are indicating as c clearance so if i put these values into the equation of f so it is equal to mu into a is 2 pi r l then uh, u is 2 pi r ns and h is c so you will get this expression mu into 4 pi r pi square r square l into ns by c now this is your frictional force offered inside the bearing so you can get the frictional torque which is nothing but the force into the radius so you will get expression for this frictional torque 4 pi square r square l mu into ns by c at the same time we have considered a radial force w acting on the bearing in the previous diagram here you can see that this is w force second set of here here now this force is going to cause certain pressure inside this bearing so we are going to find out that unit bearing pressure that is equal to force upon area so w is the force and projected area we have to consider so projected area will be 2 means d into l actually so it is 2 into r into l w upon 2 into r into l and uh, using this if you have to find out that fresh force so force will be w equal to 2 into p into r into l that is the radial force acting on the bearing now this radial force if you have to find out the uh, frictional force and the frictional torque so this force multiply by frictional coefficient coefficient of friction so we will get a frictional force f into w and frictional torque then it will be f w r so again you have to multiply by r to get the frictional torque now this is the external force acting on the bearing and accordingly the torque due to that external force will be f into 2 p r l into r while the initially we have got the equation for frictional torque internally inside the bearing so this one frictional torque inside the bearing now we are going to equate these two so if i equate these two i will get these two equated and uh, this l is a common term which is getting cancelled out and then i will re-establish the relationship of all these different parameters so f is equal to 2 pi square r by c into mu into ns by p so this is nothing but called as the petrov's equation so this equation gives two important dimensionless parameters one is the r by c because this is the radius of the journal and c is the radial clearance so the, the both the units of this are mm and this is mu into ns by p so this is pressure in newton per mm square this is mega pascal second and this is revolutions per second so this gives uh, two important dimensionless parameters to us so this governs the coefficient of friction and also it governs the other frictional properties like frictional power loss frictional torque and temperature rise in the bearing now uh, we will see the Mackey's investigation there is a transition from thin film lubrication to the thick film lubrication 
as the speed increases. So this is visualized by means of a curve called mu into n by p curve, which is obtained experimentally. So you can see this, and the y-axis is coefficient of friction, and our x-axis is bearing characteristic number mu into n by p. So as you go on increasing the mu into n by p, this particular coefficient of friction will go on decreasing, and at a certain point it will be minimum value of coefficient of friction, and then it will again go on increasing. So this line will be making two different regions. One is a thin film region, and this is thick film region. So this region is unstable, and this region is called a stable region. So in this region, in the unstable region, there is a partial metal to metal contact will occur. So thin film and the boundary lubrication will be in this region, and this is completely a thick film lubrication. So one more term that we are going to define here that is bearing characteristic number, that is mu into n by p, corresponding to the minimum value of the coefficient of friction, and therefore. Uh, the further work has been this further. This particular curve is called as Stebbeck curve. So in this case, it is mu coefficient of friction on the y-axis and bearing modulus that is mu into n by f on the x-axis. So this is nothing but a region of a boundary lubrication. This is the region of mixed or film lubrication, and this is hydrodynamic lubrication region. So a bearing modulus is actually the value of bearing characteristic number. Corresponding to minimum coefficient of friction, which is denoted by K. So, in order to avoid the SEJU, the operating value of the mu into n by p should be at least five to six times the bearing modulus. And when the bearing is subjected to fluctuating loads or impact conditions, the operating value of the mu into n by p should be at least fifteen times the bearing modulus. So now uh, this uh, is a Reynolds equation which governs this uh, theory of hydrodynamic lubrication. So this equation is dou by dou x of uh, h cube dou p by dou x plus dou by dou z of h cube dou p by dou z is equal to six into mu into u dou h by dou x. So x is one direction, y is another direction. So in the radial direction and z is the means x is in this this direction, y is this direction and z is along the length of the bearing. So there are certain assumptions uh, in the derivation of Reynolds equation that is lubricant obeys Newton's law of viscosity. That is first thing. Second is that this lubricant is incompressible. Okay, and the inertia forces in the oil film are negligible. Next assumption is that the viscosity of lubricant is constant, and the effect of curvature of film with respect to the film thickness is neglected, and the film is thin, and pressure is constant across the film thickness. Also, the shaft and the bearing are rigid, and there is no continuous and there is a continuous supply of lubricant. These are the assumptions. So, with these assumptions, this particular Reynolds equation will work. Now, <coughs> Raimondi and Boyd have tried. To solve this Reynolds equation, so they found that there is no exact solution for Reynolds equation for finite length of the bearing, and therefore they solved this equation and prepared charts and tables. So they express the performance of the bearing in terms of dimensionless parameters. So now we will see that uh, this is a bearing outer, and this is journal. This is the center of the journal that is O. Uh, sorry, uh, center of the bearing as O and uh, center of the journal as O dash. This is the radius of the bearing, capital R, and uh, small r is the radius of the journal. This one and O dash to O. This distance is eccentricity. That is given as a small e. Now there is radial clearance. That is C, which is the thing but difference of capital R minus small r. And next parameter is this epsilon, that is eccentricity ratio, which is equal to E by C ratio of eccentricity by clearance, radial clearance. So from this figure, now if you have to find out the value of R, R will be equal to E plus R plus H O. You can see here from here to here, this is distance E, this is R, and this is H O, so where H O is the minimum film thickness. Now, this R minus R. If I rearrange this term, 
so this r minus r this i r i will take on the left hand side because this r minus r is nothing but the c so if i take this r minus r to the left so i and i can write that r minus r as a c so right hand side becomes h o plus e so h o plus e will be equal to h o plus c into epsilon because we have defined epsilon as like this e by c so i can write e is equal to c into epsilon so h o will be equal to now this i am again rearranging here so h o will be equal to c minus c so c in bracket 1 minus epsilon so epsilon will be equal to 1 minus h o by c where we are getting here h o by c is nothing but a minimum film thickness variable or dimensionless parameter now second parameter so the next uh, number that is sommerfeld number so in case of sommerfeld number this uh, is defined as uh, s is equal to r by c bracket square mu into ns by p where we are using r and c that one dimension is parameter r by c so s is a sommerfeld number which is dimensionless mu is the viscosity of lubricant in newton second per mm square or mega pascal second ns is the general speed in revolutions per second p is the unit bearing pressure in newton per mm square and phi is the angle of eccentricity or attitude angle now next is the coefficient of flow variable so this is defined as r by c into f where f is the coefficient of friction now if we uh, try to calculate the frictional torque which is given by tf frictional torque is equal to f into w into r so pf is equal to frictional power now pf is will is frictional power so this frictional torque multiplied by 2 pi ns will be the frictional power which is in newton mm per second now to convert this into watts that is newton meter per second we are multiplying it by 10 raised to minus 3 and again to write this into kilowatts we will multiply it by 10 raised to minus 3 again so total it becomes 2 pi ns into fwr into 10 raised to minus 6 kilowatt next parameter is a flow variable so flow variable is defined as q by rc nsl where l is the length of the bearing in mm q is the flow of lubricant supplied to the bearing in mm cube per second and qs is the side leakage so since you are supplying this oil continuously to this bearing and oil is again leaking from both the sides of this bearing so that is qs is the side leakage so therefore there is one ratio available in the table that is qs by q which you can select from this and next is p max that is maximum pressure developed in the film so there is a ratio available p by p max in the table which you have to utilize to get the value of the p so assuming that the oil is separate the atmospheric pressure so this is our assumption that the oil is separate the atmospheric pressure and according to that you are going to detect the ratio of this p by p max now uh, if you have to find out the temperature rise of this bearing then uh, we are going to consider that this uh, heat is generated due to the viscosity of the oil that means frictional work so assuming that the total heat generated in the bearing is carried away by the total oil flow in the bearing so definitely whatever the oil is uh, there that oil is carrying away all the total heat so and by considering, uh, considering this uh, we will find out first of all heat generated so pf power law frictional power is this one so whatever the frictional power is there that is nothing but the heat generated in kilojoule per second so 2 pi ns fwr into 10 to minus 6 that is the heat generated in kilojoule per second so if you put f is equal to cf into c by r and uh, w is equal to pressure into project area that is p into 2 rl then this uh, frictional power can become 2 pi ns as it is so f is cf into c by r w is 2 pi 2 p rl into r into 10 to minus 6 so this r r will get cancelled out so finally heat generator you will get equation of 4 pi 10 to minus 6 a constant then R C N S L into P into C F E and then we will try to find out the heat carried away by the oil flow.
so heat carried is equal to m into cp into delta t where m is the mass of lubricating oil passing through the bearing in kilogram per second cp is the specific heat of lubricating oil in kilojoule per kg degree celsius and delta t is the temperature rise in degree celsius so mass of the fluid or mass of the lubricating oil if you have to calculate it will be rho into q because rho is the density and q is the fluid flow into 10 to minus 6 that much kilogram per second so rho is in kilogram per meter cube and q is given by rc nsl into fv that is flow variable so if you put this value of rho and this q here means uh, q here your m will be modified as rho into rc nsl into fv into 10 to minus 6 kilojoule per kilogram per second so if you put this in above equation it means in this equation of sc it carried away by the oil flow so sc will be equal to cp into delta t into rho into in bracket rc nsl into flow variable fv multiplied by 10 to minus 6 this is the equation for heat carried now we are going to equate this to heat generated equal to heat carried away by this oil so you will find out that some parameters like rc nsl will get cancelled out from on both the sides and if you have to get a increase in temperature means out the delta t temperature rise if you have to find out it will be 4 pi p into cfe upon rho into cp by into fv flow variable so this is coefficient of flow variable and this is flow variable now for most lubricating oil generally the rho value is 0 0.86 and uh, cp value is generally 1.76 kilojoule per kg degree celsius therefore this delta t becomes 8.3 into in bracket cfv upon fv into p this p is also there so average temperature of lubricating oil is given by t average is equal to ti plus delta t by 2 where ti is the inlet temperature of the fluid now we will go for bearing design and what are the different parameters its selections so first uh, parameter in the bearing design is the length to diameter ratio so diameter of shaft uh, by strength or gt is to be designed and not by the bearing capacity so generally whatever the load it has to carry means forces and bending moments and torque based on that actually you have to design the shaft or, or also the requirement of rigidity is to be followed and not by the bearing capacity so using uh, permissible stress and permissible lateral deflection or permissible angle of twist you have to design the shaft and the length of the shaft is found by considering the capacity of the bearing so diameter of the shaft you will find out by other way or other mode of failure and the length of bearing will be calculated by considering the capacity of the bearing so as L by D ratio increases the film pressure will increase so for long bearing more load carrying capacity will be there and uh, this bearing because uh, as the length and diameter of the bearing are to be decided here so based on the value of this uh, length and diameter if the length and diameter is equal it is called as a square bearing if the length and diameter means this ratio if i calculate l by d ratio if it is less than one it is called a short bearing and if the length is more and diameter is less it means the ratio is of l by d is more than one it is called as long bearing so for a long bearing you can see that this long bearing will have more load carrying capacity compared to short or the square bearings but it will be susceptible to metal to metal contact at the edges when the shaft deflate under the load so that is the problem and also it is difficult to get the oil flow because as the length is large more length is there so it will take time for the oil to flow from the center to the two sides of it so there is a problem of heat dissipation while in case of short bearing when the elevator ratio is less than one the greater side flow improves the heat dissipation because as the length is very less so oil quickly it will go out from the bearing and therefore heat dissipation problem is not there and uh, only one thing is that it is having less load carrying capacity now second uh, parameter of design is 
the unit bearing pressure so it is nothing but the load per unit project area in the running condition of the bearing so this uh, unit bearing pressure depends on the bearing material and operating temperature and nature and frequency of the load and the service conditions so depending upon the application the bearing pressure all these uh, values will be taken into consideration so start of load is the third parameter so static load when the shaft is stationary is called as the start of load so it consists of dead weight of the shaft and its attachment so some components which are being mounted over that shaft like gears pulleys all those so its own dead weight and the attachment weight will be nothing but the start of load or static load so it is used to determine the minimum length of bearing on the basis of the starting conditions so initially with the help of this we are going to find out the start of load next is the radial clearance that is c so it should be small to provide necessary velocity gradient so generally this value of c is taken as 0.001 times the r where r is the radius of the journal then next parameter is the minimum oil film thickness that is ho so for ho the lower limit is specified and that is equal to 0.0002 times the radius of the journal so uh, the next parameter is maximum oil film temperature so if the operating temperature is more than 120 degrees celsius then definitely the oil will oxidize and therefore we have to avoid that so the surface of babbitt bearing soft turn at 125 degrees celsius for bearing pressure of say 1 newton per mm square and at 190 degrees celsius at bearing pressure of 1.4 newton per mm square and therefore your operating temperature should be within this limit because if it exceeds it is going to cause the damage to the bearing now we are going to see one numerical based on the content that you have understood up till now so it is better if we uh, do this in the next video of this unit thank you